Hi everyone and welcome to another video. So I've made it up to Bodmin Moor today. Uh, it's about 50 or 60 miles from my house, so not too, not too far away. Beautiful location. It's um, the highest points in Cornwall. I think it's about three or 400 meters in height, um, which in, in terms of height is quite low really, but for, in, for Cornwall that's quite high. So I come up here. Uh, the plan today was to just do a bit, a bit of exploring really. Um, I don't come up here very often. Uh, have a little drive around, see if I can find anything interesting. I've come to this location here first, it's called Colly Colliford Lake. Um, it's quite a famous spot, lots of people come here to photograph the uh, dead trees. Uh, you can see why it's very unique, um, works particularly well with long exposures. Um, so that's what, that was the plan first of all, just get a few shots around here. And then I was going to have a walk, or a walk or drive, I'm not too sure how far it is yet. I believe there's some sort of dam up the other end with some sort of tower, well, I thought it might work quite well with a long exposure. So I'm going to get a few shots here. Um, I've set the camera up here as you can see. I've uh, got the 10 stop, 10 stop filter on and I'm shooting straight out here with the sticks leading you out into the water. I think it might make quite a nice composition with, with the uh, water all nice and smoothed out there. Uh, I've also stuck on a, a free stop neutral density filter just to try and bring down the sky a little bit so it doesn't get too washed out. So I've just set the camera up here. What I'm hoping to do is just to isolate a few of the sticks here. Um, nothing too distracting coming in the sides of the frame and I'm, I'm trying to avoid the uh, beach there in the distance of any of those sticks. So it's going to be 100% water around the few sticks in the middle of the frame. Um, and with, with the long exposure, which is going to be about a minute at f22, there so should be some nice movement in the water to completely smooth it out. Yeah, so I reckon this might make a nice image, this one. It is the middle of the day, so the light is very harsh, but um, I, I think it might, what might work anyway. So I'm going to grab this image, and then I'm going to have a walk around the other side, see if I'm missing any more compositions. And then I think that might be my stick fix for the day. Um, you could spend all day here easily finding compositions. It really is quite a unique spot, like I said. Um, definitely worth coming up to have a look if you're in the area. So I've walked all the way around the back end of the trees and I've come around to the other side and I'm basically on the other side of the trees I photographed in the first image. And I'm going to grab another image here because the sky seems a bit, a bit more interesting at the moment. And I also like the fact that the clouds are moving towards us. Um, I find with long exposures, uh, with cloud movement, I, I prefer it to be coming towards me or moving away. So when, when the clouds sort of go across the frame, I find that can be quite distracting. So hopefully they'll be moving in the right direction and that'll give us some nice depth to the image. Uh, lots of movement in the water, uh, nice and choppy, which is good. So that should um, all smooth out nicely. The only issue I have got is this, <laughs> this ground, it's, it's like a big fat sponge. And it's quite windy at the moment, so it's really moving around. But the saving grace is the fact that Mamiya weighs about five tonnes, and that should peg me down to the ground nicely. So I'm going to grab the image, and then we're going to go and try and find that um, tower. I'm not quite sure how big this tower is, it might be quite small, but we're going to go and find it anyway and see what it's all about. So I'll grab this one. So this is the water tower I was talking about earlier. I think it might work quite nicely on a long exposure. If I can really smooth out that water and get some nice movement in the sky. Uh, I'm also sticking on a red filter, which will then give me some extra contrast. I think it might make quite a nice image. Um, quite minimalistic, but quite a strong image, hopefully. So I'm going to get this one. Uh, time, because I've got the red filter and the 10 stop filter, I've got an exposure time of two minutes, which is a nice long time to capture the movement when I'm after. And then once I've taken that one, I'm going to try one with the 250mm lens to get a tighter crop in on that water tower. Yeah, it'll be interesting to see how the two compare for those two photos. 
and then after that I'm going to just get in my car and just drive really and see if anything catches my eye. Um, I'm sure there'll be something around here. It's quite open landscape, you know, it's, it's quite sort of open wide landscape, which can be quite hard to photograph in a lot of ways. You know, there's not that much in the way of subjects, it's just huge, great big expanse of <laughs> land, so it's quite hard to photograph, but I'm sure we'll find something. Right, I'm going to grab these two and then we'll crack on with the rest of them. lens on. So I was walking back up to the car after photographing the water tower and I spotted this lone tree here. Uh, it's a really nice little tree and I love the way it's got a little bank leading you up towards it. Um, so I'm going to grab a couple of images here, probably long exposures again, I think they'll add to the atmosphere of the image. I might do one uh, with a red filter and one with just with the 10 stop. Um, yeah, so you're going to get two images of that. And then once I've taken those, I've also um, spotted the water tower looks slightly different from this angle. So I might get an image of the water tower again from this side. It's a slightly different aspect. So I'm going to grab the, the first ones of the tree anyway, uh, see how they come out, and then uh, perhaps get one of one of the water tower. So I spotted this abandoned building over there in distance, which I like the look of. I just pulled over on the side of the road here. I was hoping to um, actually walk over there and get some uh, closer images of it. But it looks like there's a double fence there with uh, lots of like barbed wire and all sorts of nasty bits and mobs on it. And there's a farm just over here to the right. Um, so what I've decided to do is I put on my 250mm lens and just try and get a couple of images from here. I just really like the scene, you know, it's a really empty scene. There's a few sheep in the foreground there by the, by the building, which is falling apart and just the empty moorland there. I think it just really captures what Bodmin Moor is all about. So I'm going to get a couple of images here and I'm going to go down to the fence, have a look and see if there's any way of sort of sneaking in. But I don't know, I don't fancy getting shot. So I've had to call it a day for today. I was down at Conford Lake for about four hours, uh, way longer than I was expecting to be down there. The plan was to perhaps spend like an hour or two down there and then head off to a couple of other locations. But I just ran out of time in the end. It's such a great spot. But, you know, I was just happy where I was, just shooting away. So yeah, I managed to shoot two rolls of Ilford FP4, uh, which would be nice to see because I haven't seen, I haven't used that film for quite a long time. Interesting to see how it compares to Delta 100, which I tend to use most of the time. Yeah, it's been a good day. Yeah, I'm really pleased. Um, yeah, so I'm going to go home now. It's about an hour drive um, back home, get the films developed, and hopefully get the video up really soon.